We're planning an IFR flight from Roanoke, Virginia here on a crummy day. Our flight plan takes us to College Park, Maryland, and we have a route picked out that takes us to the west and north of Dulles Airport before turning south towards College Park. Before we file this, we want to see if there's a departure procedure that makes sense for us. Roanoke sits in the mountains, and we want to make sure we have terrain clearance in the clouds. In ForeFlight, we'll go into Flight Plan, then tap Procedure. Tapping Departure, we see there are five different standard instrument departures, SIDS, only one of which roughly aligns with our northeast bound direction of flight. That departure is the SCUDA 3, so it would appear to be the best option for us to file, but let's look closer. Here's the SCUDA 3. As we saw, it flows northeast bound to align with our direction of flight. Let's look at the current METAR to see if we can use this SID. Here are the takeoff minimums. Even as a Part 91 flight, we still need to adhere to takeoff minimums if we accept a SID like this in our clearance. The only runway allowed here is runway 6. The winds are at a 290, so runway 6 isn't exactly favored. We could accept a tailwind if we determine the runway length is long enough, but can we make the minimum climb of 560 feet per nautical miles? Let's look at the POH for the Cessna 172. Roanoke is at about 1,000 feet above sea level. So we'll use these two rows and interpolate between the figures. The METAR shows a temperature of 20 Celsius, so our best rate of climb will be the midpoint of these two figures, roughly 630 feet per minute. We shouldn't accept any procedure that requires a climb rate higher than this. Let's see what we can expect here. To compute the required climb rate from the 560 feet in the minimums, we need to first get our ground speed. Our airspeed in the climb will be 75 knots. With the wind at a 290 using runway 6, a left quartering tailwind, the flight computer shows a ground speed of 83 knots. We divide that by 60, then multiply the result by the required climb gradient, 560, which gets us a required climb of 775 feet per minute. This is way more than the 630 the book says we'll be able to do. So this sit is out. Even if we were to climb in calm winds with a ground speed equal to our airspeed of 75, we'd still need a 700 foot per minute climb. Better, but not good enough to come under our best rate of 630. Also, remember that climb performance degrades with altitude. That 630 feet per minute is what we can expect on departure. The minimum requires us to hold this rate through 2,900 feet, at which point we'd be climbing even more slowly. So we're not using the Scooter 3. Luckily, there are other options. Here are the minimums for the Buffy 4 and Dixie 8. The Buffy 4 is a little better, it's only 500 feet per nautical mile, and more importantly, it uses runway 24, which is favored by the winds. In fact, the strong headwinds will help us gain more altitude without traveling as far, which the math bears out. The ground speed will be just 66, which dividing by 60 and multiplying by 500, gives us a required climb of 550 feet per minute. We can do that with our best rate of 630. Yes, our climb rate degrades as we get higher, but we only have to sustain this through 1,675 feet. So we should expect to hold this through that altitude when we can transition to a much shallower standard climb gradient. Over on the right, the Dixie 8 also uses runway 24, but has a climb gradient half that of the Buffy 4 we can easily make this requirement. Both procedures have a southwest bound flight direction, so choosing between the two, let's take the Dixie with the much more comfortable climb requirements. Now, the Dixie involves following the localizer outbound, a somewhat unusual procedure which involves not chasing the needle as we usually train, but flying away from the needle. With GPS equipped, we can program in the departure and get guidance off of that, which may mitigate that challenge though. Why does the localizer afford a much shallower climb than the RNAV SID, even though they're essentially pointed the same direction? The localizer is part of an LDA approach into the opposite runway. The localizer is offset from the runway center line because it's specifically designed to cut through the gap in the mountains ahead of us. So by following this course, we have the best terrain obstruction available. We do have to carry this climb gradient through 2800, and as we know, climb performance degrades with altitude, but we have plenty of room in our numbers to make it. Still, let's see if there are other SIDs among the options that don't involve the outbound localizer. There's the Hokie 3 and the Monat 4. The Hokie 3 offers two runways that both have a minimum climb under 300 feet per nautical mile, which we already showed we can more than make work. 
especially the 205 foot gradient for the favored Runway 24. The Monat 4, on the other hand, doesn't allow Runway 24. We'd be taking Runway 16 with a slight tailwind. That 500 foot gradient is going to be tricky. So we can choose between the Dixie 8 and the Hokie 3. Here's our route of flight going first west to the Roanoke VOR and then proceeding northeast. The Dixie 8 is a bit better aligned with this route. Once we contact departure and get radar identified and climb above the controller's minimum IFR altitude, we can expect to get told to make a right turn to Roanoke and proceed on course. Before we make a final decision though, let's look at the takeoff minimums page for Roanoke. There are some non-SID departure procedures also available to us. For runway 24, the favored runway, we need to hold a minimum climb of 365 feet per nautical mile to 5,100 feet. At that altitude, our climb rate goes down, and we interpolate between these two figures to get our best climb rate of about 430 feet per minute. Using that same formula, we need at least 400 feet per minute. It's within our capability as the book says, but it's pretty close to call, and it doesn't give us the kind of margin that Dixie gives us. There's an option to do a climb in visual conditions, but that requires 2,600 foot ceilings. The METAR says the overcast layer here starts at 2,000 feet, so that's out. Let's choose the Dixie departure then. We'll add that to our flight plan and file it. Sometimes having too many options can make your flight planning a bit more involved, but it's worth it to find the best option for your flight. Check out IFR Ground School and more great training today at the link here and in the description below.